it's my honor to officially unveil the BlackBerry T2. We're here at the BlackBerry T2 event. I'm Ayaz Akhtar with Roger Chang. Roger, what's new with the BlackBerry Key 2? Well, with the BlackBerry, so you have to start by talking about the keyboard. The keyboard is completely redesigned. The keys are 20% larger. Uh, they're textured, so you got better touch typing capabilities. It's matte instead of glossy. And the old one on Key 1 was actually glossy like, what, like, like the yeah, old bubbly actually, ones? Yeah, it actually slipped and slide on the keys. Frankly, the Key 1 keyboard felt a little cheap. This is definitely a much nicer feeling keyboard. Okay, so we've got a 4.5-inch screen, touch screen. It's running Android. And we should have said this in the beginning, yes, BlackBerry is still a thing. Can you explain the whole BlackBerry Limited versus BlackBerry Mobile? Yeah, so BlackBerry Limited, BlackBerry, the original BlackBerry that we all knew and love and grew up with, uh, they basically gave up on making phones. They've uh, since licensed out the BlackBerry Mobile name to Chinese company TCL. They make televisions. They also make phones in the Alcadel brand. Now they're making BlackBerry Mobile phones. They started a year ago with the Key One. This is their follow-up. This is the second version uh, with the Key 2. Let's talk about other hardware changes. We have a very similar design. Like you said, 20% larger keyboard, but we've got two cameras on the back this time. Yes, they're, they're very proud to uh, boast of the first BlackBerry with a dual camera setup. Never mind that most phones already have this. Most premium phones do this. They, they spend a lot of time talking about the portrait mode photos that you can take now. Obviously, these are features that have been around for most premium flagship phones. BlackBerry is just getting around to it, but you know, BlackBerry is a little slow when it, when it comes to things that aren't about the keyboard. Right, so we've got that design change. We've got the dual uh, cameras on the back. We've got inside, though, it's not super top of the line. We're talking about a Qualcomm 660 processor. Yep. The major flagship phones these days are running 845s. That sounds like a lot. I know the numbers sound extremely different. It's at least 200 better. That right? must be a big deal, right? Well, no, look, so BlackBerry said, if, if you know, in terms of your, your normal tasks, uh, productivity tasks, running emails, browsing, all that stuff, you're fine. But if you really want a multimedia powerhouse, this is not the phone for you. Yeah, so where does this thing fit in with all kinds of phones? You've got Oppo phones, you've got OnePlus phones, you've got Apple, Samsung. This is going to start at $649 for a 64 gigabyte model with six gigabytes of RAM, which is insane. So look, the, the specs here, it's, it's a little weird because it's sort of priced at that level right below the super premium phones like your iPhone or Galaxy S. It's really closer to like a OnePlus uh, or an LG phone, Motorola phones. Uh, but the specs aren't quite top tier. They're, they're a little bit, as you mentioned, with the Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. It's a little bit lower than your standard premium phone, even though they would try, they're trying to frame this as, as a premium phone. So it's, it's kind of a weird position. It's really its, its own niche product, right? Like, this is going after folks who are just diehard fans of a physical keyboard. Let's talk a little bit about the BlackBerry ad showing off the introduction of the Key 2. The ad is very self-aware. It seems like they're making fun of themselves a little bit. People saying, oh, BlackBerry is still a thing without saying BlackBerry is still right. a thing. Right. It's a big, I think it's actually a very smart marketing move. What do you think about that? No, I think that tapping into the idea that you know, I used to love my BlackBerry. The BlackBerry, there's there's a bit of nostalgia involved there. It's 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 kind of a smart move, kind of bringing back that BlackBerry love that we used to have. We used to have this. Used to have some. I used to have a lot of BlackBerry love. I mean, I wrote whole stories on my old Blackberries. So that reminds me back uh, back to the keyboard situation. They were talking about the clickiness that the designers were worried about how well these keys performed. They compared it to the BlackBerry Bold 9900 yes. with a very beloved keyboard. They got a lot of people in the crowds excited about that. Just the reference to the Bold 9900. I remember the clickiness of those keys. I remember how responsive they were. And the fact they were really using that as sort of the foundation for this keyboard definitely bodes well for you. Yeah, I think they're trying to reach diehards. And I think this device, while not like super top of the line, like a 999 phone or something like that, if you're into BlackBerry, into an actual keyboard, this is one of the few phones that has a keyboard right. on it. And it's running Android, so you've got thousands and thousands of apps. I mean, millions of apps, I guess. Well, like I was saying, this is, not, this is not a mainstream phone. This is not a phone that's going after the same crowd as an iPhone or a Galaxy S9. This is really a niche, niche product. This is going after folks who love keyboards. Uh, and fortunately, there aren't a lot of other options out there. So like, this is it if you want a physical keyboard. We're going to see how this thing performs in a full review. So we'll have a lot more details at CNET.com. I'm Ayaz Akhtar. I'm Roger Chang. We'll see you guys later.